here. My name is Dave, and I'm going to help answer your questions, or hopefully I'm going to answer them. Um, okay, so we have to find the integral of x cubed dx from 4 to 6. This is a definite integral. And before I show you how to do that by hand, analytically, I want to show you, uh, make sure that you understand exactly what it is that we're doing here. The integral gives us, or the definite integral gives us the area between the graph of the, uh, the function's curve, in this case, x cubed, and the x-axis from four to six in this case. So the area bounded by uh, the graph of x cubed, the x-axis, and x equals four and x equals six. So over here, I did it on a calculator. The calculator, or I, I graphed x cubed, f of x equals x cubed right here. And then I asked the calculator to evaluate this integral from four to six of x cubed dx. And what it did is it found the area between x cubed, the x-axis, and the equation x equals four, or the graph of the equation x equals four and x equals six, and that is 260. Just to be clear, this gray area bounded by the curve x equals four, x equals six, and the x-axis, this area is 260 which is the answer that um, is given, and it is correct. To do this analytically, we're gonna use the power rule for integration, which states that the integral from x to the, x to the n dx is equal to x to the n plus one over n plus one plus c. We don't need plus c in this case because this is a definite integral, it has bounds. So we don't have to write plus c for our answer. And of course, n cannot be equal to negative one, otherwise we would have zero in our denominator. And we're also going to be using the fundamental theorem of calculus part two, which says that if I find the integral from a to b, and in this case from four to six, of f of x, in this case x cubed dx, is equal to the antiderivative of f of x, my um, evaluated from a to b, meaning once we get the antiderivative, we substitute in the value of b, which in this case is 6, and subtract the value of a after substituted, after substituted into the antiderivative. What's the antiderivative? Well, if I take the derivative of the antiderivative, I should get the original function. That's one way we can check it. So let's roll, shall we? Sorry about that there. Um, okay, so we'll go blue. So this equals, using the power rule, x to the n plus one. Well here, n is equal to three. So this will be three plus one over n plus one, again, n is three, so this is three plus one. This is a definite integral, so we're going to evaluate it from four to six, and this notation right here is one way of, evaluate, of showing that you're still going to evaluate it, or you need to evaluate it, a definite integral. So I'm gonna simplify this, x to the fourth, three plus one is four, over four, evaluated from four to six, Okay, so now we're gonna implement the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. The antiderivative of x cubed is x to the fourth over four, and here represented generally by a capital F. If I took the derivative of x to the fourth over four, I would get x cubed. That is the relationship between the two. So now evaluating it, all I do is I substitute in six, and four and subtract them. So this becomes six to the fourth over four minus four to the fourth over four. Again, using the fundamental theorem of calculus part two right here. If we simplify that, six to the fourth divided by four is 324 and, and four to the fourth over four is 64, which you'll find is equal to 260. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Um, the integral from four to six of x dx. Uh, remember this is x to the first power, so n is equal to, the, to one. 
So this will be x to the n plus 1. So that's going to be 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 evaluated from 4 to 6, which is equal to x squared over 2 evaluated from 4 to 6. And all I did is simplify this. So this becomes 6 squared over 2 minus 4 squared over 2, which is equal to 36 over 2, which is 18. 4 squared 16 over 2 is 8, and that is equal to 10. Uh, check. We got that answer. All right, so the integral from 4 to 6 of dx, um, they're telling us that's equal to 2. Well, what the heck's going on here? Well, let's look at it this way. In front of this dx, there actually is a 1. 1 times dx is dx. Um, but to use or to make it clear on how we can use the power rule, instead of I'm going to rewrite 1 as x to the 0 power, because x to the 0 power, recall, x to the 0 is equal to 1. Well, then this is equal to x to the 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 1, evaluated from 4 to 6, which is equal to x to the first over 0 plus 1 is 1, evaluated from 4 to 6, which is simply x evaluated from 4 to 6. x is a function. We're used to having to do something. But if I replace x with 6, I simply get 6 minus replacing x with 4, 6 minus 4. And that is equal to 2. Okay, And then the last one, I wanted to show you it graphically, because remember, the integral gives the area bounded by the bounds, the function, and the x-axis. And the first one I showed you, it's 260. Well, here it is the curve, even though it's a line, we'll call it a curve. f of x equals x is graphed. This is the x-axis. But the bounds are equal. It's right at 4. So there's no way there can be any area um, under there. And you might say, well, wait a second, there's, there's a line there. Isn't, doesn't that have area? Well, remember, a line has no thickness. It has one dimension, and that is length. So hopefully you can see that the area um, here is actually zero. Okay. Well, how does that work? Well, we already integrated this. Remember, n is equal to 1. There's 1 to first. Uh, there, I'm sorry, that's x to the first power. So this is going to equal x to the 1 plus 1. And the actual integration of this is the same as what we did in the second example. Um, but I'll redo it. 1 plus 1 evaluated from 4 to 4. This is step-by-step -step analytically. And maybe you see how to do it right away, which is great. x squared. And you don't have to write down all these steps. 1 plus 1 is 2. So that's x squared. 1 plus 1 is 2. Evaluated from 4 to 4. Just going to show you how you're going to, uh, you'll see that this becomes, um, I'll write over here, 4 squared over 2, replacing this 4, replacing the x with this 4, minus this 4 is going to go in now, 4 squared over 2, which is equal to, let's see, 4 squared is 16 divided by 2, so that's 8 minus 8, which is indeed 0. All right, hope this helped.